In this video, we're breaking down exactly when you should start charging your app's users. Now, some people argue that you should always charge users of your app and you should never give away free use of your app, even during early testing. The thing is, there's more to this advice and if you don't have additional context, it could end up holding you back. So the goal of this video is to help you launch sooner and grow your app more strategically. I also wanna help you avoid the problems that can come along with charging your users too soon and at the wrong time. Now make sure you stick around until the end because we're gonna go over everything you need to know to understand when to start charging your users. I'm also gonna give you a rule of thumb, kind of like a litmus test that you can use to always make sure you're charging at the right time. And we're also going to go over two apps examples to talk about when you would start to charge users on each different type of app. So make sure you stick around for that. Hey, it's Kristen over at Coaching No Code Apps. We help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps they can use to start their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding. So if that's what you're doing, then subscribe to this channel for new videos to help you every single week. To understand exactly when you should start charging users, you also have to understand the different launch and growth stages your app is going to go through. And there are four of these. The first launch phase your app will go through is into its alpha testing stage. Now, alpha testing is purely to test for functionality. Can a user go from start to finish without any interruptions or hitting any bugs along the way? You should not be charging alpha users to test your app because the app won't necessarily be used in real life applications. So if you were building a project management app, for example, well, the app wouldn't be used to manage a full blown project during alpha testing. The testing would focus specifically on whether or not the features actually work and function as they should, but not whether the solution itself solves the problem it has been designed to solve. The second phase you're going to go through is pilot testing. After you have successfully alpha tested your app and you know the functionality is sound, you will move to pilot testing. Pilot testing happens with prospective users within your target market or with pilot test users rather, who are actually a part of your target market. They have the problem that you are aiming to solve. Now, you might charge users during pilot testing. Typically, you won't. And here's the reason. Pilot testing is really just a process of validating that the features you have created in your app are the right features to solve the problem your app has been designed to solve. So let's step back a minute and think about it this way. When you initially came up with your app idea, you went through a certain process to validate that app idea. So whatever you did to feel confident that you should actually invest your time, your money to build out the app. So whatever validation for the idea that you did that made you feel like, hey, this is a good idea to go ahead and build, right? That was a, an idea validation process. But at this point, when you are building out that initial idea, you're building out the product, you have to go through a product validation process because the reality is your product is still a hypothesis. Right? Yes, you validated that idea, but it's still a hypothesis. So you need to validate that your hypothesis is in fact true. Now, the reason you wouldn't generally charge users to help you validate your feature set is because your hypothesis might not be true. And chances are when you go through your pilot launch, you are going to get some feedback that causes you to iterate or potentially pivot in some ways. So it wouldn't necessarily make sense for a user to come on board, pay to use your app when the feature set hasn't actually been validated that it's actually going to solve their problem, right? There's no value exchange there. So pilot testing is really just getting feedback from users who have the problem who that you're trying to solve, getting feedback that the feature set you've created and the core solution you've created is the right one that will solve their problem, but they're not necessarily using it in real life applications to solve that problem in an ongoing way. Now, here is the tipping point. When you have gotten that product validation, that means you need to move straight into beta testing. Now, beta testing is to make sure the product is adoptable in real life applications on a consistent ongoing basis. Pilot testing, make sure the features are right. 
beta testing. Make sure the features can be used and applied in real life scenarios and the, the app can be adopted by your users. Here is your litmus test. You should charge users to come on board your app when value is being exchanged. So if we go back to that project management example, well, if a, if a user is coming on board and they're just setting up a project to help validate that feature set, but they're not managing one of the actual projects within their business, for example, with their entire team, they're not receiving value. Once they actually start managing a project with your app, they are receiving value. Charge them, charge them when they receive value. Now, the fourth and final stage that you'll go into throughout the growth of your app is your true rollout stage. So you have gone through your beta testing and validated that your app is adoptable in these real life applications. Well, now you're just going to expand from there. And this is when you roll out your app to become more widely available. It's out of testing and other users within your target market can freely come on board, not freely as in they don't pay, but they can come on board and continue using your app. Now, there are many, many, many other stages beyond that, but in simplifying it, this is that fourth stage, the rollout phase. And yes, you should be charging users during this rollout phase. Now, to be clear, when you're doing the beta testing and when you are in this rollout phase, when I say you should be charging users, that means you can also be doing things like free trials or offering a freemium product. So I'm not saying that there can't be any type of aspect of free, but they need to be committing to some sort of a plan that will lead them into becoming a paid user. All right, let's jump over to the iPad and go through a couple actual examples. Let's say we're building a SaaS app, software as a service, and we are creating a project management tool for a certain type of company that is consistently having problems delivering on client projects. So they need a system to help them better manage these projects internally with their team. We're not going to look at alpha testing here. We're gonna skip that one. So we have pilot testing, beta testing, and then that rollout stage that we talked about. Your pilot testing can be really simple and it can be basically having companies create projects with the system that you've created that will help them deliver on those client projects versus missing those deadlines. So let's say you've identified three specific bottlenecks that keep these companies from delivering on these projects. Well, during your pilot testing, you could have the companies go through the process of creating a project using the features that you have designed that will help eliminate or re reduce or remove these bottlenecks. Now, this wouldn't mean that they'd be using the app again, on an ongoing basis in real life applications, they'd just be going through the process to test the app and validate the feature set initially. The validation process will likely involve some iterating, but once you get to the point of having that valid feature set, then you'll move on to the beta testing stage. And during this period, you could put the companies on, let's say a two week trial period where they actually do manage an entire project. So we'll say here, they're going to manage their project in actual real life applications. So they would use the app within their company to manage this project during this uh, trial period. If this is happening, then you wanna be charging them or again, putting them on a trial period that's going to lead them into becoming a paid user because they're receiving value from the app. They're using it to manage a project more efficiently. Now, once you've gone through your beta testing and you've validated that your app is adoptable, then you're going to again, go into that rollout stage where now these companies, let's say can manage any project they want to, maybe they can manage multiple projects. Maybe they can even bring their client on board as a new user type, right? Your app is going to expand and evolve from there. And again, you should be charging your users at this point, or at least putting them on the path toward becoming a paid user. Let's look at another example. So let me switch over to this one. Let's look at a marketplace app or any two-sided app. And let's use the example of a freelance platform where freelancers are able to come on board, create profiles, and 
create portfolios of their work to allow them to connect with clients who are needing work done. So it's kind of like a, a gig marketplace. So again, we'll skip over alpha testing and look straight at the pilot testing. So your pilot testing could involve a process of having these freelancers create, let's say profiles and portfolios. So essentially they are establishing themselves on the platform, but they're not yet being introduced to the client side. Now, while you are validating this feature set for the freelancers, you can also be creating client, in this example at least, interest. So what I mean by that is during the initial validation for one side of the two-sided app, you can be creating a list of interested uh, people who are on the other side of that app. So if we have freelancers in the marketplace and we have clients who want to connect with them, well, we can be creating a list of interested prospective users who fall into the client side. Now, this would just be user outreach, right? You're marketing your app, but instead of bringing those users directly onto your app, you'd be doing something like creating an email list so that you can have these people who are interested in the app ready and there. And then once the app the initial feature set has been validated with the freelancers. You can kind of open the doors to the, these interested prospective users who are clients and let them come on board and connect the two. Now, once you do that and both parties are on board and connected, so that's really your beta testing. So we're gonna say connect both sides. Now, if both sides are connected and, and they're able to hire or you know, get jobs, well, value is being exchanged. Remember, that's our litmus test. And if value is being exchanged, then you should be charging your users or at least putting them on the path toward becoming a paid user. As you validate for adoption and you move into that rollout period, this is really just continued expansion of the app. You might be adding on new feature sets that help streamline the app or help add even more value for your users. And again, at this period, users should be paying for the app or at least on some sort of trial that leads them to becoming a paid user. Ultimately, the big rule of thumb here is if value is being exchanged, you need to charge the user or put them on the path to becoming a paid user. And it really doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. Yes, we've gone over different launch and growth stages, and yes, we've gone over some examples, but keep in mind that every single app is unique and every single value proposition is unique, right? Everyone's app is a little bit different. So there can't always be one blanket statement. Going back to one of the very first things I said with this video is, you know, some people will argue that you should always charge users for your app and never give away free use. You can't have blanket statements like that because there are different launch phases, different growth phases, and value isn't always being exchanged. Yes, you should charge users at a certain point, and yes, that will give you the ultimate validation. If someone's gonna pay for your app, then it's, it's valid within your market as a valuable solution, but there are steps you need to take to lead up to that point. If you charge your users too early, they're not going to find value in your app and they're not going to want to pay for it. On the flip side, if you keep building and building and building your app until you think that at the very first moment of your launch, it's going to provide value so you can charge right out of the gates, then you're launching your app too late and you're not getting the different levels of validation that you need to carry you from idea to rollout. So stick to the rule of thumb. If value is being exchanged, charge your users. The next step from here though, is to make sure you're building the right features at the right time. Because again, you wanna make sure you're building the perfect version of your app to get the exact type of feedback you need that will lead you to those paid users. You also wanna make sure you're building a scalable, well-performing app all along the way, because what I don't want to happen is for you to go through these phases, and then once you get into that rollout period, realize you have to rebuild your app in order to scale. 
So to make sure you're headed forward on the right path, you can head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop and join in on our free extended training that's gonna help you make, make sure you're building the right app and launching the right features at the right time to the right users and getting the right feedback so you can grow and scale from there. So head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. We hope to see you there. And I hope this video was valuable for you. If it was, give it a like down below and we'll see you in the next one.